Um, so although we're only examining one um, person and his life today, um, it's important to remember that there are many people who um, deserve credit for their actions, um, who deserve appreciation um, and being commended for all of their work and um, commitment to building the church as we know it today. So I just wanted to lay that out um, in my introduction um, before jumping right in. Um, so in this presentation, the life and person of William Cameron Townsend um, will be discussed. So why Townsend? Why William Cameron Townsend of all of the people um, that could have been discussed um, as an important church figure in church history? Um, the legacy of Townsend will be understood as the presentation unfolds, so just stay with me. As we begin um, the biographical overview, I think it is fair and logical to begin with early childhood, so that's where we're going to start. Um, it's interesting, after doing some research and um, in the Woodbridge book and also online, um, through Mission Box, it is interesting to see that not much of Townsend's early life is known prior to his church contribution and his, um, his efforts in church history at large. So um, I did notice though that it's clear that Townsend was born in Los Angeles, California in 1896. Um, Townsend, it's also known that Townsend was born in and raised into a family of Presbyterians. But it's unsure, we're unsure of how, um, just how intense their, their upbringing was, if they were super involved in church or just went to say that they went. Um, so we're unsure of how keen they were on church and teaching. Moving on to his education. Um, Townsend was not a good student, according to my resources. Um, he attended Santa on a high school in California but really struggled to succeed in his classes. While Townsend was in high school, his father actually lost his job, so it was inevitable that Townsend was gonna have to drop out of high school and probably would never go back. Um, but fortunately, thanks to his other family members, um, they thought it was important to, to keep Townsend in school, so they paid for his high school um, just so that he could continue his education. And had it not been for that, Townsend probably would not have had the ability to make the impact he made on church history. Which is really neat to think about how his family cared for him so much that they were willing to pay for his education even though he wasn't very good at it. <clears throat> um, so knowing that Townsend was not very great in school, instead of allowing his failure to defeat him, Townsend actually used it as a form of motivation to study harder and be a better student. Um, it all paid off at the end of his high school years when Townsend was awarded valedictorian of his class um, at Santa Ana High School. Upon graduating high school, Townsend decided to stay in LA and attend Occidental College. Um, in 1914, Townsend expressed his desire to be a minister, but soon found out that he actually didn't know anything about the Bible. While in college, he was a part of a volunteer movement that discipled students to become overseas missionaries. His intrigue in the entire movement and their mission led him to drop out of college in 1917 to pursue his desires. Townsend began working at a Bible house that year, also in Los Angeles, which was a place that taught missionaries how to educate children. The school eventually closed, um, so it became a center for publishing, publishing and distributing um, literature. Um, through that, Townsend was wanted to hop on board this idea, so he was sent to Guatemala to hand out Bibles. And while doing so, his life was changed for the better, not just for himself, but also for people worldwide. Um, Townsend was sent to Guatemala and was in a village um, where an Indian man questioned Townsend as he was handing out Bibles, simply asking, if God is so smart, why, isn't, why doesn't he speak my language? Um, I know that the Indian man had no idea that his question could change a life, but um, through God's sovereignty, it began turning wheels in Townsend's head. And he left the village with 
um, a desire to to translate more Bibles so that more people could have um, their Bible in their own language. This is what began to stir Bible translation in Townsend's mind. Looking at his ministry and place of service, um, after being challenged by a passerby in Guatemala, Townsend resigned at the Bible House and quickly joined Central American Mission, also known as CAM. Townsend's first mission was to learn the language of the man who challenged him, which is called Kakchukul. Um, and then, once he learned the language, was going to proceed by translating the entire Bible into that language for that specific village. It was not an easy task. It took Townsend 12 years just to learn the language and translate it. So, after 12 years of work, the Bible was at last translated into Chakukul for the Indians, and he returned, and the village finally had um, God's Word in their own language that they were able to read and understand clearly. Afterwards, after doing that work, Townsend resigned from CAM and um, out of conviction that he needed to um, translate the Bible where it had possibly never been before, um, Townsend realized that he needed to do something else with his life. And so this is kind of began um, shifting his focus for Townsend. Um, as he began to shift his focus, um, the Great Commission really stuck out to Townsend in a new way. Um, he knew that his mission was to <clears throat> make disciples of all nations, but for him it meant translating. So he began to think about people groups that were unreached in order to fill the Great Commission. In 1934, Townsend started Camp Wycliffe in Sulphur Springs, Arkansas. Um, Camp Wycliffe was a training ground for future Bible translators, and it really focused on the linguistic side and also survival skills training because they would probably be in villages where um, they would have to incorporate these type of skills. The camp ended up training and producing so many Bible translators that unreached people groups soon had the Word of God in their very own language. In 1946, Townsend began traveling around the world. During this time, Wycliffe translated the Bible into over 100 languages. Townsend was awarded doctorates and even the Nobel Prize for all of the hard work he put in. And that was in 1981. After dreaming about the USSR, Opening their doors to Wycliffe, Townsend got to see his dream become a reality in 1989. Two major organizations that um, Townsend left to continue his work after his death was the Summer Institute of Linguistics at Camp Wycliffe and also JAARS, which was a communication mechanism to stay in touch with missionaries while they're on the field and also to aid in the technical side of Bible translations. Even though Wycliffe, I mean, even though um, Townsend accomplished so much in his life, there were obstacles in his way. Um, just like every historical figure, Townsend faced obstacles of his very own while trying to leave a legacy. His education. Not a person per se, but still a major hindrance for Townsend was his early schooling. Had he not continued to persevere through the hard times um, and for his family paying his motivation, um, none of his work would exist today. Also, the Indian man in the Guatemalan village. While Townsend was passing out Bibles, this man tried to serve as a hindrance to Townsend and discourage him, but it actually ended up encouraging him to do better things. The Bible House's school closing down could have been an obstacle for Townsend. And while it was sad to see a good thing go, it opened the doors for the main goal to be Bible translation, which aided in Townsend's um, desire to pursue his God-sized dream. So in the end, um, in December of 1981, the terrible news came. Townsend had fallen to the disease of leukemia. During Townsend's time in life, there was no cure for leukemia, so in 1982, he died a peaceful death. As much of a tragedy as it is to see <coughs> excuse me, legendary people go, Townsend li Townsend's life was well lived. Up to this day, there are over 500 people groups who now have the Word of God in their very own language, able for them to understand and receive salvation. Thanks to Townsend's life, we can see what hard work and a love for Jesus can do for our world around us. Praise God for his kindness in enabling Townsend to accomplish so much for his kingdom and his glory.